Number 10. The Twin Deaths In 2002, two twin brothers died within hours of each other in separate car accidents while driving on the exact same road in Finland. The first of the twins died when he was hit by a truck while riding on his bicycle. He died just one and a half kilometers from the spot where his brother was killed in another car accident that very same day. Number 9. The Twin Lives The twin brothers Jim Lewis and Jim Springer were separated at birth and were adopted by different families. Unknown to each other, both adopted families named their adopted son James. The two twins grew up without ever meeting the other, yet both had careers in law enforcement. Both had interests in mechanical drawing and carpentry, and each had married a woman named Linda. Both twins had sons, one of whom was named James Allen, and the other was also named James Allen. The twin brothers also divorced their wives and married other women who were both named Betty, and they both owned dogs which they named Toy. So pretty much, they lived identical lives. Number 8. The King's Double In Monza, Italy, King Umberto I went to a small restaurant for dinner. When the owner of the restaurant took King Umberto's order, the king noticed that he and the restaurant owner were virtual doubles, both in face and in build. Both men began discussing the striking resemblances between each other and found many more crazy similarities. Both men were born on March 14, 1844. Both men had been born in the same town. Both men married a woman with the same name, Margarita. The restaurant owner opened his restaurant on the same day that King Umberto was crowned King of Italy. And on the 29th of July 1900, King Umberto was informed that the restaurant owner had died that day in a mysterious shooting accident. And later that same day, King Umberto was assassinated by an anarchist. Number 7. Wilmer McLean Wilmer McLean was a simple grocer who lived an honest life in Manassas, Virginia. Manassas, Virginia is also where the very first battle of the U.S. Civil War took place in 1861. During the battle, Confederate forces used Wilmer McLean's house as a base of operations. As the battle started, a stray cannonball was shot into Wilmer's house and shattered his window. Fearing for his family's safety, Wilmer moved into the small town of Appomattox Courthouse in southern Virginia to escape the conflict. But almost four years later, on April 9, 1865, Confederate General Robert E. Lee officially surrendered to the Union forces in the town of Appomattox Courthouse. The surrender agreement was signed in Wilmer McLean's new store, so that means the first major battle of the U.S. Civil War took place in Wilmer McLean's front yard, and although he moved, the war found its way back to him and ended on his property. Number 6. Robert Todd Lincoln Robert Lincoln was the son of the U.S. President Abraham Lincoln, but what he is most famous for will surprise you. Robert Todd Lincoln was coincidentally either present or nearby when three assassinations of U.S. presidents occurred. While Robert Lincoln was not present at his father's assassination, he was at the White House and rushed to be with his parents. Years later, at President James Garfield's invitation, Lincoln was at a train station in Washington, D.C., where he witnessed President Garfield's assassination in 1881. Then while attending an event he was invited to by President William McKinley, President McKinley was killed by an anarchist assassin in 1901. Robert Lincoln recognized these strange coincidences, and he is said to have refused another presidential invitation with a comment, No, I'm not going, and they'd better not ask me, because there is a certain fatality about presidential functions when I am present. Number 5. Ohio Drivers In 1895, there were only two cars on the road in the entire state of Ohio. That same year, drivers of the only two cars in the state crashed into each other. Number 4. Ohio Astronauts For some reason, the state of Ohio and space travel seem to be weirdly connected. One of the first Americans to have been sent into space was John Glenn, a man from Ohio. Neil Armstrong, who was the first man to set foot on the moon, was also from Ohio. 25 U.S. astronauts are from the state of Ohio in total. 
NASA, recognizing this strange coincidence, decided to make a webpage exclusively devoted to astronauts from Ohio. Thankfully, they've done a better job than Ohio drivers. Number 3. The Futility of the Titanic In 1898, the author Morgan Robertson wrote a novel called Futility, which was a story about the maiden voyage of a luxury liner called the Titan. The book was published just 14 years before the famous Titanic ship sank. It turns out Robertson's book pretty much predicted the future. In the book, the Titan was described as unsinkable, and Titanic's designer said the same thing about the real ship. Both ships were British vessels that were about 800 feet long. In Robertson's book, the Titan hits an iceberg and sinks. The Titanic also hit an iceberg and sank. In the book, the Titan hit the iceberg at midnight in April and sank 400 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. The real Titanic sank at midnight on April 14, 1912, also 400 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. The Titan in the story had 3,000 passengers and not enough life jackets, while the Titanic had over 2,000 passengers and not enough lifeboats to save its passengers. Number 2. King Louis's Cursed Day When King Louis XVI of France was a child, he was warned by his astrologer that the 21st day of each month was a cursed day. Later in life, King Louis was so terrified by this that he didn't conduct any royal affairs on this day. But on June 21st, 1791, following the French Revolution, King Louis was arrested while trying to escape France. And on September 21st, 1791, France officially became a republic. And then, on January 21st, 1793, King Louis XVI was beheaded by guillotine. So, his astrologer's prediction was pretty much dead on. Number 1. Major Summerford When the British officer Major Summerford was fighting in the fields of Flanders during the First World War, he was knocked off his horse by a flash of lightning and paralyzed from the waist down. Summerford then retired and moved to Vancouver. And then in 1924, as he was fishing, lightning hit the tree he was sitting under and paralyzed the right side of his body. Two years later, Summerford was able to recover and even walk again. But then as he was walking in 1933, a lightning bolt struck him again, this time permanently paralyzing him. He died two years later. But Summerford's misery doesn't even end there. Four years later, during a storm, Lightning struck and destroyed Major Summerford's tombstone. <laughs> he must have really pissed Thor off, am I right? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you all next time, unless if you get struck by lightning. In which case, enjoy the new hairdo.